time is up and here we go. Good morning. Again, good morning. Thank you. Welcome you that are here in person with us today. And anyone that is joining us online, we want to welcome you today too. Oh, let's just all take a deep, deep breath. You that are coming, how much of you really enjoy the Qigong? It's amazing. It's just amazing. I encourage you to come and do Qigong with us. It is so gentle. It is not hard to do and so important that you keep your energy bodies in check. And I just love the, the lady that does it. I think she's so sincere and so good with it. So give it a, give it a try. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's a vibration. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I, I'm just so encouraging with so many people getting sick here and all kinds of challenges and things going on. Do what you can to stay grounded as much you can uh, in this 3D world, and to do that, you're going to have to uh, stay as healthy as you can on every level. So we really need to look at our. Our, our food diet, we need to look at our mental diet, we need to look at keeping our bodies moving and, and not just moving. I know a, a good walk is great, but make sure you in, in, uh, that you bring in somewhere some energy exercise of some kind. You want to you deal with your etheric energy body. So it's not just taking your physical uh, part, but also your energy part in that. So just encouraging you to do that because I know the difference it makes after I feel, uh, after we do that, it's, it's just amazing, it's, it's just amazing. All right, here we go again. Again, I wanna thank you for being able to be here to allow me to do this as we're continuously doing all these classes which will go far beyond just a Wednesday morning but will be a part of the Academy for Spiritual Awakening as classes for people made available all over the world. And I want to remind you that as these uh, are become available as classes uh, all over, that you were a part of co-creating these classes with me. Your energy and your presence has made this possible and that you will be out there all over the world energetically for those who are drawn to these classes. Uh, and I mean classes from years ago. <laughs> All right, we've been through faith. Peter, we've been through strength. Andrew, wisdom, James, love, John, power, Philip, imagination, Bartholomew, understanding, Thomas, and Will, Matthew, and today is order. This is James. All of these have a specific place in our body. Faith is in the pineal gland. And the uh, strength is in the small of the back. Wisdom is in the solar plex. Uh, love is behind the heart. Power is the throat, which is the power of the spoken word. Imagination is between the eyes, or the third eye we call it, eye of enlightenment. Understanding is in uh, the forehead. So when it says between the eyes and the forehead, it's talking about the pituitary gland versus the pineal gland. So you have two major glands uh, in, the, in the forefront uh, of the brain that are very important and spiritual. Um, well, Thomas, uh, uh, and in the forehead. And today is James in the navel in the navel. Do you realize how much blood flows through the navel where the umbilical cord was? <coughs> I've started a new practice for myself and that's putting castor oil every night in my navel. <coughs> They're saying it can change your life because the blood goes through there and takes the castor oil into the system, which is becoming uh, a comeback, I guess, from grandma who knew something when she gave us that awful stuff and made us take it. 
that they're finding the health benefits are amazing with castor oil. So rather than taking it, you put it uh, in the navel and just leave it there at night and it, uh, all, all your blood runs through that and picks it up and takes it to aspects of your body. So if you're interested in that, read up on castor oil. It's, it's uh, becoming more and more popular. All right, well, as you see, I have lots of stuff here. I, what I feel like I do is I bring a whole bunch of pieces to a puzzle and say, Holy Spirit, put together. Because I don't know sometimes what that exactly means. Uh, and this is a good way to start order. This looks very disordered. If you came up here and look at my, my notes and scribbles and pages of stuff like that, you would see it as disorder. But out of this disorder, I give it to the Holy Spirit to make some order out of it. That will be our lesson for today. So let's talk a little bit about uh, order uh, as it is being taught in the, in the 12 aspects of our power. Uh, order is a power that balances ourselves in the world, allowing one to use their absolute willpower, which was Matthew, by the way. So all these powers kick, uh, all connect up at some point. You got, you got power, uh, Philip, order of power. Then you have willpower, will, which is Matthew. Uh, and then we're dealing with today, uh, a new power, uh, which is James. So each one of these work with each other to produce the whole, the whole 12 uh, to bring us into uh, a state of balance. Now, <clears throat> due to the fact of what's going on in our world today and on our planet, that's two different things. Do not confuse world and planet. When fundamentalists talk about the end of the world, they think that's the end of the earth, of the planet. That is totally ridiculous. In fact, their own Bible says the earth abideth forever. That's a scripture, and the earth abideth forever. So it can't end the planet. It does go through major transformations and changes, which it is in right now a major sixth, a major sixth transformation and change uh, in which it has to break itself down to do. And that's why we're seeing all the disturbances uh, that are going on in nature right now is because of the fact that it is preparing itself for a quantum leap into a different dimension of what the planet will be and what that is, it will move from the density of 3D, 4D time space and move into the beginning of a more etheric fifth dimensional planet, which is being called today the new earth. See, people get that, but they don't know how to explain it. I mean, that caught on so much with Eckhart Tolle's book, The New Earth, and Oprah making it worldwide known and there was new earth classes and all kinds of things. But what does that mean, a new earth? Can they explain it? How does the earth become new? And that's what we're trying to deal with here. It becomes new only when it, when it positions itself to come out of disorder. So, Because of that, we have the, we mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning. We have changes in most of the different spheres that surround our earth. That means the core of the earth is changing because the spin of the core of the earth is changing. And there is a spin in the very center of the earth. It's a coil that spins. And when it spins, it puts out, uh, it puts out energy 
that's magnetic and electrical. It's magnetic and electrical, and we call that electromagnetic. You've heard that term, the electromagnetic field of the Earth. That's coming out of the center of the Earth, and it's because of that that the Earth can spin from what goes on in the center of the Earth. If that changes, then the Earth begins to change its spin somewhat. And when it changes the spin, it may tip a little bit, just slightly, but that makes all the difference in the world. If it in any way tips either way and the sun is hitting it differently, you're going to have different winters and different summers and different whatever. Now, I'm not undoing the fact of what humans have done, but this is much more than that, what's going on. This isn't all human greed uh, of, of what we've done to this planet. It certainly is a great part of it, but I think you've got to understand um, that Mother Earth has her own uh, consciousness, her own intelligence in what she is doing uh, to, be, to poise herself for the next leap into the next level of what it means to be matter. And again, that will be less dense matter. And that's called etheric. I want you all to get that. But when I used to teach, uh, when I was teaching Soma and teaching the fact that you have, a, you have two physical dimensions, one of them you see and one of them you don't see, but they're both physical. The one you see is this density that you see right here uh, of, of a physical body. But the part of that physical body that's on a little higher vibration that is not detectable to the five senses that you can't see is real and it's called the etheric part of your physiology. Okay, so that's your etheric body. Now, I don't wanna go down this lane, but it's in me. But you gotta understand that one of the contributions that I made in the teachings of Soma Energetics, that was a correction that the body has an aura. And I'll say 99.9% .9 of people, if you ask them, will say, yes, the body has an aura. No, the aura has a body. Now, I call that my benefit of spiritual dyslexia. Sometimes dyslexia is the, one of the best things spirits can use because dyslexia, see, is a, a dyslexia. A person who's dyslectic can see something more backwards or in a different arrangement than what a dyslectic mind sees. So I have found, uh, you know, I love it in the Bible, it says, let the weak say they are strong. <laughs> but some of the things that the world would see the weakest in me have been the strongest spiritually for me. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. To see numbers differently, when I thought I was a kid and so stupid and horrible in math and thought I was crazy but excelling in art and everything else, doing great but not math, because I just had a different way of seeing, uh, resequencing numbers. Well, when I get into sacred geometry, I get it. I was seeing it from a different sacred place in myself than the sequence of what I was being taught in 3D mathematics. So I won't stay on that, but, but some of these things are not handicaps. They're not something to feel bad about. Something that makes you feel stupid about yourself. Sometimes it's a compliment to get a D in algebra or an F in mathematics. <laughs> on a spiritual level, that is, in, in some way. So. Um, So or, order, yes. Google, I'm the finish. I was going to say that, uh, okay, you say the earth comes out of disorder, which is what we're doing too. And it reaches, it, it's going from the third to the fifth dimension, which is also our journey. And I have been told that the earth has already made this ascension and it's up to us to make it 
also so that we can continue to stay here. I was told that if we don't raise our frequency to match that of the Earth's fifth dimension, we will not be able to continue to live here. One of my teachers said we will have to find another place to live, a place with a lower frequency. Ooh, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful and so true. And uh, uh, man, I'd love to get into, I'm really tempted to go there because everything you said is so absolutely true. And I think this might answer why a lot of people that you may know, we know, are leaving 3D. I don't think it's death. I think it's a transformational change of vibration and frequency. And I think they're going to a different earth dimension than this one. Now, I don't think that we, again, I think the earth is already in dimensions. I think there's an, a physical earth, an etheric earth. I think there is a mental, emotional, uh, astral, and so on and so earth, just like our bodies have these seven uh, energy bodies already. They're already there. It's just where consciousness lands is where our reality is perceived uh, to be. So um, I'm today, right after this, making a memorial video for my dear friend of f f 45 years who passed away. I can't go, but they've asked me to do a video. It's very sad. It's very sad to me. It's been a sad week of losing some very special people uh, that have been with me a long, long time. But at the same time, I really believe that by sitting under the teachings that I know they have set under, that they have prepared themselves for the next level of where they're going. See, and that's why you can't take this thing of, uh, you're either here or in heaven. <laughs> that don't work anymore. And, and, and the Bible don't teach, uh, it talks about the heavens. It, Paul went to the third heaven. There's, there's all kinds of mentions of levels of heaven than one big old room where you go, where there's streets of gold and mansions and everybody goes to the same place. That is just not happening. We go out at the level of consciousness we attained in the body is the level that we go to out of the body. Where the tree, lie, where the tree falls, so shall it lie. So you've got people who've done hardly any work in this incarnation that is going to go out at a more uh, uh, part of their existence. Call it another planet, call it another dimension, I don't care what you call it, but they're all matching the level of consciousness that is attained. So when I think of my dear friend today, and excuse me for just this being on my mind so strong, is she's been 45 years with me diligently under my teachings, working with me in the ministry. I mean, she's, she's been such a part uh, of what I've done that in her, in her letting go of this dimension, I know that she's gone into a certain level of consciousness that she has been brought to uh, today. And I'm glad to have her over there as my friend. <laughs> That's, that's another, another thing. So thank you for that. That's, that's a, a deep thing and a thing that I think only those who are spiritually minded can truly understand today. And, and may we could go into that much deeper at some point, I would love to. So what I'm saying to you, if the, if the core is changing, magnetic fields are changing, and then you have something called this human resonance. Has anybody ever looked the human resonance up? You really, really should. It's named because of a man who discovered uh, how the difference is. See, there's electromagnetic and then there's electrical and magnetic. And when, when the uh, electrical is changing, then it, it changes the vibration uh, of the earth. And for so many eons, it was at 7.8 hertz didn't move for a long time. The earth was just kind of stuck into that vibration. But in the last few decades, there has been a change in the human resonance. 
and it's gone up 10, 11, 12. Uh, and they say when we get into 12 and 13 free, uh, hertz, we will be entering fully into the new age. So something is happening in all these fields that make up our earth. The biofield, you've got the biofield, you've got the astral field, you've got all these different fields around the earth, just like you have fields around your body uh, that are coming in. Not, they do go out, but they don't go out until they come in, where everybody thinks it's always energy is going out. I'm saying it only goes out because it came in from higher states. And if I got into that, we'd never get out of it for the, for, from now on. So Can I ask we'll move. Can I ask what makes 13 when the gym resonance changes to 13? Makes that be the magic number? How do they know that's the one? Well, think of 12 being, seems like, the, the spiritual governmental number they call it the number of government not government like we know no, right. but like the 12 disciples the 12 tribes it seems to be a full cycle 12 is a full cycle now 12 is also a three which is resurrection so it seems like once we've gone through the 12 cycles of something then we are raised to the next norm of frequency mm -hmm. that seems to be the point is is in the number 12. And that's a whole study we could do on, on 12, but 12 is a powerful, powerful thing. So you, and I would suggest look, look for these numbers around you. Look at the number of your house, look at the number of the motel room you stay in or the seat you sit in mm -hmm. on a plane or whatever, because numbers are always telling you something all the time. Add them up and get to the root one. And if you get to a three or a 12 or a three and a nine, which makes a 12, which is a three or a whatever. I mean, there's so many combinations of numbers that can end up being the same root frequency. Be aware of your environment and what, what is around you and what, uh, what the planet is telling, telling you. So anyway, the bottom line is that all of this is changing and that's pretty documented uh, scientifically that all of the fields of, that make up the earth and around the earth are changing. Also, we're uh, very close to every 12 and a half or 21 years of a polar shift. And that's when the poles shift north and south. And that happens every 11 years. So all kinds of stuff goes on that we're just not aware of and we're going, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling, but things are really crazy right now. This, this is the way we react to stuff because we don't have the understanding and the consciousness to dis discern the language of Mother Earth. See, the Earth has its language. Please get this. Everything has its own pure language. It, you don't always have to use the language you understand to interpret everything. Let it be its pure own language. I, I'm, I just get fascinated with the language of birds. <laughs> I mean, birds have such a language, and if you really listen to them, how they're talking to each other and, and, and communicating with each other and, and, and sending messages, I have no English for that. I don't know how to interpret what those birds are saying. And then when I read uh, many years ago that is in, in the song and the vibration of a bird that causes a flower to open up itself, I realized there's a whole language of nature out there that I don't even know anything about, but it has its own language. Why can't spirit have its own language? Why do you always have to think everything is spiritually interpreted by the language you know in your head? But that's another story, okay. Order is the power. What I'm, all of that that I'm saying is things are off, things are tilting, things are slowing up, things are, all kinds of things are going on, and where do we find our balance? Even now, I'm having some balance issues. So here's what my ego left brain says, you're old. 
you're old, you're losing your balance, it's your blood pressure, it's your, you know, whatever the list is, the ego's list, it's got a whole list of stuff that, that's our excuse to stabilize and normalize things that aren't normal. Are you hearing me? That's what we do. We adapt to things and say, it's normal to be this way in the 70s or 60s or 80s. It's normal to feel this way. It's no, no it's not. We, we normalize it and stabilize it. What is, and we're spiritual people here. So let's not look at it from that point of view. Let's go up to a spiritual point of view. Let, let's look at it from a new order of consciousness that says, no, I am so connected to my mother, Earth, and I am her child, and therefore as she is changing, so am I resonating with that change and transformation, and therefore what was once the norm of my balance is now being reordered into a new state of balance. I'm being retuned to a new balance. Now, and as Jackie was saying, we're needed. We're needed. Part of us is needed in 3D. We don't want to jump out of 3D. The worst thing we could do for the planet right now, and it'd be so tempting. Let's say that um, Yeshua, uh, Archangel, whoever, Michael, uh, Saint Germain, whoever your, your, your guy or gal is or spirit is, comes and says, all right, Today, I'm going to bring you into all that you believe and all that you've taught. I'm going to bring you into this wonderful place of, of total spiritual immortality and light and whatever. You know, the reaction would be, come on, let's go. But you've wired yourself different. Hear me, hear spirit. You wired yourself different for you came here not to do that. You've wired yourself to not take the shortcut. You've wired yourself self with process. I'm here for the long haul. I'm here for the process. I'm going to go through, not around the fire. I'm going to go through the fire. And that's the answer. Excuse me, it's what you're going through. Going through means there's, there's a way out eventually, but you've got to go through it. You've got to go through it. We used to sing a song, I'm going through, yes, I'm going through. I paid the price, no matter what others have do. I chose the way. Of God's despised few, I'm going through, and I keep saying that. I don't like what, what's going on, but I'm going through. I'm going through. What can I learn in going through this? So looking at, at this from a different order, and this is what order means to me in this whole idea of, of, the, of the facets of power. Order is the ability to look at the norms of order and to see it from a spiritual order rather than a human natural order. So this power that we're talking about is to help us maintain a goal against the threats of the world. Why? One always needs to clarify priorities to have the organization skills to do the things in their proper order. Now this, this aspect of order becomes personal order. Personal order. So it means that the orders or laws of the world do not always work for you because you come in with your own order for your life. 
Does that make sense? So that would take us back to pre-incarnation. That takes us back to such things as contracts and agreements that we made before we came into this incarnation. Now I want you to get this. So that means you have already set an order for your life that allows you to attain your highest place in that incarnation and fulfill the purpose of your incarnation. That makes the order of your life unique and personal from from world order. You see, the world has an order of what is right, what is wrong, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. And if we're not careful, we try to align ourselves with that because the reward of that in 3D is that we are accepted, we are, we are in some way validated, we're called a good person, we're, we, we, we are able to be liked, accepted by society at large. Are you following what I'm saying to you? We build a reputation of being correct and right and good. There's a reason why the teacher said, do not call me good. But there's none good but my Father which is in heaven. Because they wanted to hold him in his good works as a man. And he says, no, I will not be known for my good works. The only good that I do is what comes from my spirit and is fathered in me as a divine order. So in other words, Jesus marched to the, the beat of a different drummer. <laughs> and most enlightened beings have. That's, makes them who they are. Whoever your, your spiritual teacher, guru, whatever that has influenced you is because they did not follow the order of their time and found their own order for their life and was able to step out of the hypnotic spell of the culture and the world they live in. And in doing that, brought in a different level of spiritual teaching and therefore they found followers and people who resonated with their messages and out of that we have the Muslim, we have the Jewish, we have the Christian, we have the Gnostics, we have uh, Zoroastrianism, we have all of those, all of them, I can say their name them, but all those different little groups are because somebody did not march to the rhythm of the drum of their time. Nor do we all the time. So what is your personal order? You may say, I don't know. Well, then you need to come and see somebody like me or, or Binta or whoever here that does energy diagnosing work. Get with people who can help you to go back and help you to remember the order you have set for your life. This is why people feel a lack of at one moment, no matter what they learn. And some people spend a lot of time and money learning from different teachers, workshops, books, and whatever. Now, we all know the difference in that kind of knowledge. That, that's mental intellect. And the ego says, because you know that, now you're spiritual. <laughs> because you're smart and you can talk. You can talk the, the language of spirituality without being spiritual. I'm not talking about gnosis now. I'm talking about the gathering of mental intellectual knowledge outside 
uh, of one's oneself. So we who are in this position, it is easy for us to tell you, well, this is what how you need to be living. This is what you need to be doing. This is this is. We have to be care so careful of that, so careful of telling people what we think the order of their life should be, rather than it introducing them to their already divine order that they've incarnated with. That's our job as teachers, healers, speakers, whatever position we're put in. It, we're here to empower you, not disempower you, and say, uh-uh. If you're gonna be spiritual, you should be doing this. You should be meditating every day, so and so amount of time. Uh, see, it's easy for us to fall into that, and I do my best not to. I'm doing my best not to, to make a list for you to what I think you ought to be to be in good standing as a spiritual citizen of this planet. I want you to be in touch with your, the order of your life that you are not a victim to, but you have co-created. Now, to do this, this is important that you understand there are tools for accomplishing this. Tools. Tools can be the voice, tools can be the hands, tools can be the tuning forks, to, to uh, bowls. I mean, these are just tools. That's all they are, just tools. They're not destinies. They're tools. They're points of contact between the order of the world that you are outwardly, physically trying to live up to versus the order that you come in in the soul. And when these two are not together, there is conflict in your life. In other words, maybe you... Okay, we, we think sometimes what we're looking for to be happy and satisfied is the order of finding the perfect right mate. That's it. That's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to find the perfect right twin flame mate. Or maybe it's, I need to be successful at doing something and bring in money that I don't ever have to worry about finance anymore, or even this one. I need to be physically healthy at all times. If I could just do that, if I could do any of these things, I think I could find total at one moment with myself. And as good as some of those things are, trust me, it does not feel everything in you. If right now a magic wand that could give you everything that you desire, that you might think would make you totally happy right now. And just think about it. If I didn't have the arthritis anymore, if I didn't have the diabetes anymore, if I didn't, wasn't alone anymore, if I, da, da, da. I mean, we can make a, a list like uh, to Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll guarantee you if every one of those things could happen, and your, the order of the world is different from the order you incarnated with, you will live a life that's disordered, and not the good disordered. I'm not talking about the, the, that, that dis, I'm talking about the fact that you are not in alignment. So for us to get into alignment, there are tools and ways that we can accomplish this. The divine will establish in man in righteousness, judgment, and peace and bring him into the inner city of the Salem within him. Salem is the word in Hebrew for peace and where we get the city, Jerusalem. Same thing. Salem is peace. Jerusalem, the city of peace. Oh, so here we go.
2,000 years ago was a tremendous shift in order of what the order was for the world. Up until 2,000 years ago, the world was being ordered by 613 different laws. To be in order with those laws, you had to do the best that you could to stay in those laws. That is what being in good standing means, is to follow the laws. Uh, I'm just thinking how, how it amazes me that nobody obeys the laws on 77. <laughs> there are laws. There are speed laws and laws all over this city that 90% or more people do not in any way obey the law in that sense. Well, this is what happened up to 2,000 years ago, is people just didn't obey the laws that was laid out for them. Therefore, the order of the laws failed. They did not work to bring people to the level of their own spiritual divinity. So, there was a need for a new order. 2,000 years ago. And that is called the order of Melchizedek. So I'm going to talk a little bit today, and we may continue next week to talk about this a little bit here. Melchizedek, interesting character that is uh, important. It's mostly in Hebrews, the seventh chapter. Um, so I'm trying to see where I want to go here with you. So before I start, let me give you a, a good definition of order that maybe you can take with you that's pretty simple. Order is the absolute realm and is the ability to organize, balance, and sequence and adjust. I'm going to read that again. That, that's our bottom line definition here for order. Order is the absolute realm and is the ability to organize balance, sequence, and adjust. Now those are really good words. I can talk on each one of those words. Uh, there's some things I fight about myself that I don't like as I've gotten older, but it'd be much better if I'd adjust a little bit more than I'm doing because I'm causing myself a lot of anguish by not adjusting to the things that are kind of changing in my life that I, I still want to do that I did 30 years ago. That's not, a, that's not the order in 3D. The order is you adjust to each stage of your life and be the best that you can in that stage. This is the order or power that we're talking about. The order to organize, See, once in a while you gotta stop back. It's like, it's like when you come to that place, I gotta do something about this closet. I've been looking at this closet for six years. What a mess it is. And you just have that moment that you go in there and start pulling it all out and organize it. Hmm? And sometimes you gotta do that with your life. You just have to step back, look at it, and say, wait a minute, I need to do some reorganizing of my life, changing of priorities of my life. And that's important. I need to find the new balance of my life. 
I need to realize that things are transforming and I'm going to go with the wind of change and transformation. I'm not going to fight against this. I'm not going to be the branch on the tree that is stubborn of the wind and get Snap. snapped off. I'm going to flow with it. The sequence of my life, that's, that's so important. What is the, how's the, what, what's the most important part of your life? Who do you think is going to give you this kind of happiness you're looking for? Your family? I'm not saying your family don't make you happy. A lot of times they make you unhappy. That's a toss-up. That's a toss-up. It's not a 100% anything, but it can go either way there. You know, there's happy, not happy times in, in all of that. Uh, but sometimes you need to look at the, at the uh, and change the sequence of, of, of your life. Well, I was going to say something, but I don't think I'm going to say it. I'm going to piss somebody off if I do. And adjust. And adjust. <laughs> and adjust. In Hebrews 7, 11, it says, if perfection could have been obtained through the Levitical priesthood, this is the Old Testament order, law. While still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek from the order of Aaron. Aaron is a division of priesthood ministry in which the priests offered the blood sacrifices of animals to God. Now, I don't know about you, but I think they needed to look at that and find a better order than thinking that their atonement was going to come by the sacrifice of innocent animals and spreading their blood on the altar. There had to be something better than that. Aaron's division of priesthood is the priest of the, of the blood sacrifice. Order is also upon the laws and ordinances of, of the laws themselves. There exists no record that can link Melchizedek to a natural father or mother. No mother. No proof of birth. Neither any account of his death. No record of age. Resembles exactly the true Son of God, the Christ. Jesus had beginning and ending of days. Christ did not. You cannot find where Christ was born or Christ died. You can't find Christ had a mother or a natural father. You can't find the nationality, the race, or the descent of the Christ. So we're talking about the order in which the divine was giving preeminence in mankind. Now because I believe that Jesus, Yeshua, represents the many incarnations of the Adamic race, of Adam's race, of a blood race, In other words, the same one that becomes Yeshua was the same one who became Abraham. Because it says, even before Abraham, I, I am. So Abraham represents a level in the incarnation of the Adam race. And then we move into different levels throughout the Old Testament that's following the reincarnations of the Christ. To Abraham, Melchizedek first appears. And So many things. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how to get into this. Then I think of even all the way up to beyond the Bible characters to the idea of many of you that are connected to St. Germain. 
St. Germain fits that description. There really is no record of his citizenship beginning or ending or death or birth. I think of Enoch who did not die to go and be with God, but was translated. If you look at all of these clues in the story, you will see that it's heading for the last Adam. Jesus is the last Adam. It is the fulfillment of all reincarnations to finally the Christ now shows up no more as a mystical carrier of Melchizedek, but ends up in Yeshua in availability to the human consciousness. Now, Christ becomes available to incarnate into the human story. This brought a whole new order. What I'm suggesting here in, uh, in coming down is that just as we entered into an Old Testament or covenant or order, into a new covenant or new order that we are entering into a third. And you and I have been summoned in this time to be here to make this transition and transaction. We are called to the cosmic table of transition by making the transactions. I do not know no more than they probably knew 2,000 years ago exactly how this was going to happen and how is it going to land. No more than I know exactly how this is all going to come together and land. And I think it's best I don't because my, my ego doesn't need to know how it's going to happen because it will take it and make it its own agenda. I know a few things. One, there will be no more one Messiah or one Savior or one teacher. That is over because Christ is universal. Christ is universal God consciousness making it in and it's through this Christ consciousness, this universal mind of God, that we will enter into a third agreement of some kind that we're going to have to have faith, Peter, to follow. Um, the New Testament calls the New Testament a better covenant. And I noticed that. It's better than the old law, but I don't know, if, what about the best? <laughs> I thought it's interesting it called it just better. In other words, don't stop here. The best is yet to come. And I, I'm here to tell you, if I could give you any encouragement, maybe Spirit would say to you today, the best is yet to come. But right now we're in transition and transactional mode and that's why, hear me, Heartlight. This is why it's so important what's happening here on Sunday mornings. There is a breakthrough of spirit here. And spirit's getting ready and trying to set a new order. I'm not sure exactly what it is yet. I'm going to try to follow whatever spirit wants. But you may see some changes on Sunday mornings. We may not do the same things the way we've been doing on Sunday mornings. But I'm going to step out of the way and let spirit begin to show up as it has, especially the last two Sundays. It seems the message that I'm doing on chaos and transformation and from the quantum level is resonating with a lot of you. I think I've had more comments from you than I have the six years I've been here on the last two Sundays. So I realize that you must be resonating with it at some level 
of what Spirit is saying. And this is why I want to do the workshop on the Spirit language because I'm going to try to show you that the speaking in tongues of the Bible became a dogma and doctrine of the Pentecostal church. But what is happening now has nothing to do with that. It is something for our time. It is not a repeat of anything that happened on the day of Pentecost. It is total spirit angel language that is coming to us to give us this new agreement that we're entering into in spirit before our brain gets a hold of it. I come as a thief in the night, for if the man in the house would have known I was coming, he had been ready for me. And when spirit language is coming through, the ego shuts down and says, but I have no language to understand what you are saying. This is a good thing when you don't understand. When you're saying, I don't understand you, you're saying, I ego don't understand. But every time that happens and slips out of here, not they're gonna make it happen, but it's just happening, people. It's just happening on its own without any kind of push to do it. But every time it happens, and you say, well then who's interpreting? What? In the message, the next week it will be interpreted. You will hear the message just change because the language that came from spirit now becomes conscious language and it comes through the ministry. It's not like in Pentecost we used to speak in tongues and somebody get up and say, yay, the Lord was saying to thee, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm not talking about that old stuff. I'm talking about something that is being, trying to be made conscious to expand the consciousness that you already have, but not by learning it from a language that the brain has learned to use and manipulate and control. I think language is one of the most manipulative things we deal with in the world. Misunderstanding, miscommunication, it's all in language. Oh, you, did you mean that? No, I didn't really mean that when I said that. I should have said it this way. I'm sorry I said it that way. Oh my God, I should have. Told. Me and my big mouth, blah, 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 blah. What if you could su surpass all that and just go to pure spirit? And, and let me, I've got to tell you this. New guides and spirits are coming from different dimensions right now that are 100% pure light beings. And they're coming with a language. We'll call it angel language. Mm. I'm getting ready to go teach this. I've been asked to do it come to Indianapolis and do a talk, I'm doing it on spirit language. I'm getting ready to really hit this thing big and be a part of this new, this new third agreement and dimension that is getting ready to happen. And I don't want heart light left in the dust. Come on and go with me. Be with me, not under me, be with me. You're doing it when you, when your hand, I, I, Benta's always, I, she's always moving in the energy. When she, that's, that's light language. What do you think when I'm preaching and I'm doing this or I step out and I walk down there, that's light language. It's not always gibberish to you. Light language comes in so many different forms and ways that you don't even know what's going on in doing it because it's subtle and the ego don't like it. You better say something I can understand or I'm out of here. So go. <laughs> well, they are, and they are. <laughs> and they are, and I have to be willing. When a shift happens, things are rearranged and changed. And, and that part of my natural self that concerns me when people 
leave or people don't come back or whatever. You know, my ego wants me to blame myself. Okay, you have failed. You're not good enough. You, do, you need to step aside. You need to get somebody in here who can grow the church. You know, because all it's thinking about is bodies. More bodies in these seats. More bodies in the seats. I don't care how you get them. Get them in here, manipulate them, control them. You're not going to have anything if you don't get more bodies in this seat. That's just not true, I know, in my spiritual part of my mind. Oh, my, let's take a minute. I don't know if I'm making any sense to you at all. You are. But, oh, yes, you are. but uh, so be it as, as you receive it, so it is. Join with me a moment. Join with me in heart an open mind. Join with me in spirit of present truth. Join with me in the spirit of light. Light coming directly right out of higher dimensions into fifth dimension and piercing our hearts with the language of pure love and vision. Holy Spirit, we need you right now as never before. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom. We need you to keep us balanced when everything around us is whirling around us and changing and losing the old balance, let us find our center in the Christ, in us, through us, as us. We welcome divine mind into our mind. For no longer the God of this world shall sit on the throne of our minds and brains. The divine principle, divine mind, divine law will rule and reign again in the kingdoms of men and women. Guide us through this time. I yield myself an open vessel to flow through me as you choose without apology. And we just say thank you, God. Thank you for this time that we have chosen to be here, to be your bridge over the troubled waters of change and transformation. And so it is. A couple of things I want to say is uh, Friday is Benta's workshop, one o'clock. And uh, it's, it's rich, that's all I can say. It's always rich. The second thing I want to say to you, um, that I, I'm, I'm just saying this for you to stand with me in faith that we are only halfway to our budget. This month is gonna be a challenging month. And what I want to do is I want to release it. I'm gonna release the concern, the worry, the fear. I'm going to release the belief in lack. I'm gonna release the excuses that it's summer and things are always down in church. I will release all of that and say an eternal yes to spirit. Spirit, do your thing. Whatever it is, we receive it with gratitude and thanksgiving. But if you are here, just be conscious. If you've been blessed, to be blessed a little more than others and you have a way that you want to be a blessing to heart light, Consider between now and Sunday. It'll be highly appreciated. 
I guess David has something. Well, you, like, I, was, I got a text saying there were some people who wanted the handouts for the class. Yes, please. Okay. And then, uh, and then this. Have you seen this? Yes, I'm sorry. Did you mention sorry. it? No. Okay. Is Janice Malaya, who might know that name. Yeah. Okay. So it's her new book. Wow. It's recipes. To, it's re she sent one to David and I, and I'll leave, we'll leave it on the on the desk out here. And inside is how you can order one. So you can look, flip through it if you'd like. Food recipes? Oh, it's, nutrition. Uh, nutrition yeah. according oh, to the stars. So, you know, <laughs> Libra, I'm supposed to eat balanced meals. Yeah. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> Thank you.